single cell organism to multi-cell organism has been replicated in a lab uh, several times. Um, it usually is in response to predation. Um, so you, you literally have single celled colony that start to glom together and specialize. Um, this is something that you can see just as an example, um, in, uh, uh, seaweed. If you, if anybody out there has ever eaten sushi before, um, seaweed is not a plant. It's a protist. Um, and is a multicellular protist colony. So it's a bunch of single celled organisms all squanched together. Um, and then they take on different roles that look a lot like leaves and stalks and roots and shit. Um, but they actually technically aren't. They're all just single-celled organisms glommed together, taking on different jobs in order to benefit the whole colony. So that's the thing that we see a lot. Um, so then you get multi uh, single, uh, multicellular organisms. Um, plants and animals uh, 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 were single-celled first. Um, uh, interestingly, photosynthesis evolved before plants, strictly speaking, were a thing. Um, but animals also evolved before plants were a thing. So you have photosynthetic cells then animal cells, then plant cells later, then multicellular organisms after all that. Fucking nutty to think about. Um, and that's a, like, that's a 10 minute discussion in and on self. Um, and so, uh, but that happens to be why the sky is blue is because of the order of things that way. Uh, because you have uh, cyanobacteria, coccolithoph uh, coccolithophores, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, phytoplankton, um, single celled organisms, mainly bacteria that are doing photosynthesis uh, and eating up carbon dioxide and producing oxygen, which is why the sky is blue today. Um, anyway, uh, animals evolve uh, uh, and uh, then we get multicellular animal cell uh, animals um, uh, and then you get uh, worms and then you get segmented worms and then you get little, little, little flippy things on the outside of the worms uh, and then you get yeah, fish. Yeah, so life started uh, in the ocean. Um, all of the evidence points that way. Um, so life started <laughs> oh, in the ocean okay. and then uh, everything diverged from there. And some animals went back to the ocean. Um, for example, uh, yeah. you skip forward, you know, several hundreds of millions of years, um, cetaceans, whales and dolphins and stuff. You had uh, artiodactyls, which is to say uh, uh, even-toed hooved animals, deer and uh, sheep and stuff. Um, and uh, these guys are the, uh, the, the, the even-toed undulates, the artiodactyls are the ones that, went back into the water and became whales and dolphins and porpoises and stuff that we have today. Uh, that's why they have similar bone structure. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why even today, whales have multi-chambered stomachs, y'all, because they're fucking ruminants that you like, like uh, descended from things like cows. Um, and so uh, you have this, this kind of gradation, uh, 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 this gradient where you get more and more complex organisms um, until eventually you get to fish uh, fish split into actinopterygians and sartocopterygians. Um, and you can hear the Greek roots in that word. Pterygia is to say wings. So actinopterygians are ray wings. So you see like a, a tuna fish or something like that, and they have like those little spines that go down their fins. That's what they mean by ray wings. Uh, whereas sarcopterygians, sarco means uh, flesh. So fleshy wings. Those are things like uh, coelacanths, or more importantly, tiktaalik which is this lobe-finned fish, this fleshy-winged fish um, that starts to get really chunky bones in its upper fins that allow it to kind of push itself along like the shallow waters. Um, and then you get air breathing. Air breathing is complicated because there's like a, a way, way, way higher concentration of oxygen in the air than there is in water, and it's way easier to maintain. Um, Keeping oxygen concentration in water has a lot to do with acidity, has a lot to do with salinity. There's bore and root effects. There's all sorts of stupid shit you have to deal with. But air, there's fucking oxygen everywhere, and it's just free for the taking. But you need specialized organs for it because gills, the whole thing is that you have the, the whole point of breathing is that you have a differential pressure of gases, partial pressures of gases um, inside the body and outside the body. With gills, it's really fucking easy. You just putting water over your, your, your uh, uh, very thin tissues. With lungs, you need specialized tissues not only to like capture that in a dry environment and keep them moist, you also need muscles to move that air in and out. You need a diaphragm. It's a whole business. Um, and so lungs actually evolved from swim bladders in fish. You had this thing that was already there trapping air and we just co-opted it. This is called exaptation. When something evolves for one purpose and then you tweak it for another purpose. So you have this exaptation of a swim bladder uh, and some fish use this organ to crawl up on land and some fish use this organ to be better fucking fish. And that's nutty. Um, 
Uh, and so then you've got tetrapods. You've got four-legged animals crawling around on land. Um, uh, early ones are amphibians. Then from there you get reptiles. Then from there you get what we call stem mammals, things like dimetrodon. Uh, you go buy a dinosaur playset and you see that little fucker uh, looking like a big squash lizard with a sail on his back. That's not a goddamn dinosaur. It lived hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs um, in the Permian period. And it was also a synapsid, which means if you look at a skull of a human here, you've got this one dent, this one hole behind your eyes there. That is a, called, this is called a synapse, this little gap there. And this one hole means you're a synapsid. Uh, reptiles and birds are diapsids. Uh, which means two things. It means they have two holes back there, and it also means they're dumb as shit. Um, and so this is a synapsid, which it's a stem mammal. Dimetrodon is not your direct ancestor, but it's in the group that were um, the synapsids. And so these guys go on to evolve warm blood. They go on to evolve fur by a hundred and no, sorry, two hundred and twenty million years or so. Um, uh, you've got the, the Mesozoic era happens at 250 million years ago. You've got dinosaurs and shit. Um, by 220 million years ago, you've got the very first actual real fucking mammals coming along. And a hundred million years after that, uh, at 120 million years ago, we get this diversification where you have the, uh, uh, um, marsupials going in one direction, the placentals going in another direction and the monotremes going in a third direction. So all mammals laid eggs for like a hundred million years and today only two mammals lay eggs and that's the platypus and the echidna those are the last remaining monotremes and then you got the marsupials where they crap out a half developed shitty weird looking nightmare jelly bean baby that crawls into a fucking pouch and latches onto a nipple so tight that if you tried to remove the nipple you'd literally rip its skull out of its fucking head God. Uh, and on the other side, you've got placentals, which, which uh, develop a placenta. They have an internal uh, uterus. They, they don't lay eggs. Um, fun fact, uh, that all happened because of a retrovirus, which is a class six virus that implants its DNA into your DNA. The whole thing about endogenous retroviruses, it's another like five hour lecture, but look at the fuck up because it's neat. Um, so then you've got this split with the mammals. And then in the mammal clade, um, you've got uh, rapid diversification. The most important one is the supraprimates. Uh, where you've got little rodent-looking dudes. Uh, hamsters and rodent, uh, rodents and things today are, are still supraprimates. Um, until about 65 to 68 million years ago, you get a really interesting group called the Plesiodapiforms. The Plesiodapiforms uh, have this really fucking cool adaptation called fingernails, y'all. Uh, and this is the beginning of the primates. Um, and so you go from this funky little tree shrew-looking guy that has goddamn fingernails uh, all the way up into the rapid diversification of uh, into like monkeys, the old world monkeys, you split off and you get apes. Apes are really cool because they don't have external tails um, and they have really flexible shoulder joints and like short, stiff lower backs um, and, and like big brains and, and like really good uh, vision and bad senses of smells. Um, or relatively. No, I think I have that backwards. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, the, the apes come on. Uh, Erica's fucking pounding her keyboard right now trying to correct <laughs> what I just said. Um, but uh, I know I got the shoulders and the backs right. Um, and so the apes come along and from the apes, uh, we diversify even further and you've got the human lineage popping up, especially over the past 2.6 to 2.8 million years. Um, uh, we started walking upright. Uh, it, that's a whole trait thing. Starting like at the earliest, maybe around like nine-ish million years ago, at the late, like by, by four and a half million years ago, we are absolutely fucking lutely walking upright, but like in a kind of weird way. But uh, you get up to like the Australopithecines coming up on, you know, the, the, uh, like three or four million years ago, like, holy shit, we're walking upright. Um, and uh, then our lineage, the Homo genus, uh, starts about 2.6, 2.8 million years ago uh, with Homo habilis, depending on who you ask. Um, and then you get Homo erectus popping up a million years later. Uh, 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus comes onto the scene and makes a bunch of really cool discoveries. Homo erectus discovered that you can sharpen both sides of a rock. That was very exciting. Homo erectus also discovered fire. Homo erectus also developed boats. Homo erectus almost certainly had a language. And Homo erectus discovered how to get the fuck out of Africa and explore the rest of like this whole hemisphere, that whole hemisphere. They were in Europe and Asia and down through Indonesia. Um, uh, and so did uh, Homo floresiensis, but that's that's a modern development that we learned that they actually left a little while ago. Uh, and then 
you've got sev about a, a 200 million years ago, you have several different species of humans on the planet. You've got Denisovans, you've got Homo erectus, you've got uh, uh, Homo ergaster, you've got Homo heidelbergensis, you've got uh, uh, all these fuckers just uh, creeping around the world. Uh, and then a new species comes up, these guys, Homo sapiens, uh, and we are the second species to then fuck off out of Africa uh, in a, a, a situation called Out of Africa 2. Um, and uh, the rest is literally history. And that is a brief uh, history of evolution starting from single cells all the way up to us.